Today let's look at the histology of the digestive system. Please pause the movie uh, frequently uh, as you need to in order to spend more time looking at the slides. In this slide we see the digestive system represented as a long tube. Accessory organs such as the salivary glands, the gallbladder, and the pancreas add secretions uh, to the tube. All parts of the tube from the esophagus through the colon have a similar four-layered structure. The innermost layer is the mucosa. The mucosal layer is responsible for secretion and absorption. The mucosal layer changes as we move from one part of the tube to another just as the function of the various parts of the tube change. Proper identification of the various parts of the tube will depend on recognition of uh, these differences in the mucosa. And to some extent differences in the next layer, the submucosa, which lies beneath the mucosa. The submucosa contains the blood vessels, lymphatics, and nerves, and also in some parts of the digestive tract glands. Underneath the submucosa we find the muscular layer and under that the serosa. The muscular layer provides mixing and propulsion and the serosa provides protection and lubrication. As we move through the histology of the tube be sure to identify these four layers when you can. Let's start with this low power view of the esophagus. Notice the transitions between the mucosa, the submucosa, and the muscular layer, which is here labeled the muscularis propria. The serosa is not readily identifiable in this slide. Now let's go up to a slightly higher power in the next slide. And here you see a higher power view of the esophagus and inset in the lower left hand corner is a slide of skin. Notice the similarity. Both are stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, and in both areas, the skin and the esophagus, the epithelium uh, is scraped off by the normal functioning of the organ. And this kind of epithelium readily replaces the upper layer of cells. In the esophagus there is no secretion of digestive enzymes and no absorption taking place. It's all about transport. Now to a slightly higher power view of the esophagus we see the stratified squamous epithelium easily identified. We can uh, note the transition between the mucosa and submucosa and between the submucosa and the muscular layer. This slide shows the transition between the stratified squamous epithelium of the esophagus and the simple columnar epithelium of the stomach. Um, even in this low power view you can readily identify this transition which is shown underneath the black uh, triangle in the middle of the screen. Notice the mucous glands in the submucosal area of the esophagus. Also identify the uh, smooth muscle layer at the end of the mucosa which is identified here as the muscularis mucosa. This layer of smooth muscle is separate from the third layer of the digestive organs, the muscular layer. It marks the boundary of the mucosal layer, the muscularis mucosa. A good thing to identify because it will tell you when you've reached the end of the mucosal layer and the beginning of the submucosa. Well uh, demonstrated in this slide of the transition between the esophagus and the stomach.
spend a little time on this slide and when you're ready move on to the next welcome back this slide shows a higher power view of the transition between the esophagus on the left and the stomach on the right the simple columnar epithelium in the a gastric mucosa is readily identifiable here, as is the stratified squamous epithelium uh, in the esophagus. Notice that the gastric mucosa in this area demonstrates an abundance of mucus uh, secreting cells. Other parts of the stomach will show a different structure. In this slide, in the diagram shows us a general structure of the uh, gastric uh, mucosa. You can think of the stomach as a flat area with pits and lining the pits we have the gastric cells that we discussed in class formed into gastric glands. Underneath the gastric glands we have this muscle layer known as the muscularis mucosa. Underneath that the submucosa and in this diagram the muscular layer and the serosa are not shown. Sorry about the extra transition there. I'm still feeling my way through this recording, as I'm sure you can tell. In this slide, we see the stomach under magnification. In this view, we see the muscularis mucosa forming the border between the mucosa and the submucosa. You can see the gastric glands in the mucosa. Uh, and even at this low power, you can identify some clear spaces in the columnar epithelium of the gastric glands. These, of course, are uh, mucus secreting goblet cells. The next slide shows both a diagram of a uh, gastric gland and a cross sectional view. Notice that you um, will probably not see a complete cross section of a gastric gland. It would be very lucky indeed to have the cut made through the tissue correspond exactly with the axis of the gastric gland. And that's why the line on the left hand part is dotted to show you the part that was missed. The diagram on the right shows you the complete structure of a gastric gland. In this slide we see a cross section of the stomach at low power. It demonstrates the entire muc mucus layer, the mucosal layer, and uh, well demonstrates the muscularis mucosa, which forms the lower border. Note the enzyme secreting chief cells at the base of the gastric glands, the hydrochloric acid producing parietal cells above and the mucus secreting cells above that. Does this arrangement of cells make sense to you? Think about what these cells make and I'm sure it will. Before we move on to the small bowel this is a good time for you to pause the movie maybe go back to the beginning and spend some time reviewing the material. Uh, be sure you can identify the organ or tissue represented in the slides and the layers and other structures in the tissue that you're responsible for. When you're ready, we'll move on to the small bowel. The mucosa in the small bowel is adapted for both secretion and absorption. Remember from Fick's law that in Fick's law we know that the rate of diffusion of a gas is dependent on the surface area. Similarly, the rate of absorption in the, uh, in, in the bowel uh, is related to the surface area. And we have many modifications which occur uh, as a result of the necessity to increase surface area in order to maximize uh, absorption. Here we see the first we see the internal surface of the tube is thrown up into folds called circular folds or in Latin plica circularis. Uh, 
On top of the folds, we find little finger-like structures that project into the lumen of the bowel uh, called uh, villi, which is Latin for worms. Here's a diagram of the villi. Notice how much greater the surface area becomes when you both throw the surface area up into folds and also uh, put these projections into the lumen. And think about this compared to the surface area the bowel would have if it were a simple uh, smooth tube. Uh, notice in this diagram you can identify the mucosa uh, and the muscularis mucosa, though it's not labeled, the uh, submucosa, the muscular layer, uh, and the serosa. If you look in the right hand side of this slide, I'll read it for you, it may not be uh, easily seen, but the first uh, text says epithelial cells lining villus. And the second line says brush, brush border. So let's talk about the brush border. It refers to projections um, from the top of the epithelial cells themselves which greatly increase the surface area for absorption. And I'll show you on the next slide. This is the border of one epithelial cell. So the epithelial cell itself is above, and this is the very surface of that epithelial cell. And imagine the amount of surface area that you can get with all of these modifications uh, in the bowel. So with that as background, let's look at some specific uh, examples of small bowel histology. This slide shows a low power view of the uh, duodenum, the first part of the small bowel. Note the villi. Uh, you can identify the four layers of the bowel here quite easily. They're labeled for you. The deep purple staining mucosa gives way to the submucosa. The Brunner's glands are found in the submucosa. They secrete bicarbonate to neutralize hydrochloric acid produced by the stomach. These glands are found only in the duodenum. The muscular layer is uh, easily identified as is the serosa, which is here uh, labeled adventitia. To summarize, the specimen is readily identifiable as small bowel because of the presence of villi and as duodenum because of the presence of the Brenner's glands. You should be able to make this identification and uh, you should also be able to uh, uh, demonstrate your knowledge of the, of the layers of the bowel. There are a few circular folds demonstrated on this slide as well. Can you identify them? This slide shows a higher power view of the duodenum. You can identify both Brunner's glands and the intestinal glands which lie at the base of the villi. Intestinal glands are found throughout the small bowel. The Brunner's glands are found only in the duodenum. These intestinal glands are the glands that secrete the enzymes used to digest the food which is then absorbed by the villi. The next slide shows the next part of the small bowel, the jejunum. Note the prominent villi. You can again see, even at this low power, the intestinal glands at the base of the villi, and also the submucosa, muscularis, and serosa are well identified. Can you identify the borders of these areas? Here's a higher power view of the same slide as the last. Note the border of the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and serosa. Also, uh, note the intestinal glands at the base of the villi. Did you get all these on the last slide? Also, notice that in the submucosa we have no Brunner's glands. They're found only in the duodenum. The next slide shows a somewhat out of focus, but nevertheless, good view of the villi of the jejunum. 
clear goblet cells are readily identified in the villus and uh, the intestinal glands are shown uh, as well. What's that structure on the right hand side at the base of the villus? Well if you said lymphatic nodule that's correct. Also you can see the uh, muscularis mucosa at the base of the villus uh, clearly separating the mucosa from the submucosa. The next slide keys in on a high power view of one villus and in that view you see the columnar epithelium and the goblet cells are both well uh, demonstrated. Don't forget to pause the movie and spend some time on this slide uh, and the other slides as well. I'm going to go through them uh, rather quickly, but you should spend much more time looking at this than I uh, have spent uh, dictating it. This slide shows a low power view of the ilium, the last part of the small vowel. Note the spelling, I-L-E-U-M. Villi are seen and the four layers of the tube are well identified. We see in the ilium uh, many areas of lymphoid tissue. These are called Peyer's patches and they are the hallmark structure of the ilium. This view of the ilium shows a circular fold covered with villi. Don't mistake the much larger circular fold as an individual villus. The black area, uh, arrow uh, shows the transition between the mucosa and the submucosa and between the submucosa and the muscular uh, layer. Villi in cross section are uh, in the right side and are identified by the arrow as well. The next slide shows a circular fold with villi. The Peyer's patches are not visible. Note the large number of goblet cells, another hallmark uh, of the ilium. In this slide we see low power cross-sectional view of the ilium. Notice that the Peyer's patches are, are readily identifiable but that the identifiable but that they don't uh, go around the complete circumference of the ilium in this specimen. The next slide shows a very good view of the Peyer's patches. You can also identify the uh, uh, villi and the uh, intestinal glands. The next slide uh, shows us the colon or large bowel. No absorption takes place here and we see no villi in the colon. Note the layers of the tube as demonstrated on the slide. The mucosa, the submucosa, and the muscularis. The colon has folds or plicae and lymphatic tissue as well. The colon has a longitudinal strip of muscle running down its length called the tinea coli uh, as shown in this diagram as a red stripe. Be sure you can identify this structure in the torso model as well. In the next slide we see a fold in the colon. Notice that it's lined with uh, mucus secreting glands. And again, we can readily identify the uh, mucosa, submucosa, and muscular layer of the colon. The next slide again shows us the mucus secreting glands, the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and around the dotted line, uh, the tinea coli. And once again, a close-up view uh, 
of the colon demonstrating the mucus secreting glands, a fold in the colon, the muscularis mucosa, the submucosa, and the muscular layer. This slide is to remind you of the venous drainage of the digestive system. Notice that the blood from the stomach, the small bowel, and the large bowel does not return directly to the inferior vena cava. It goes first to the liver in the hepatic portal vein. Once the blood has drained through the liver, it then returns to the inferior vena cava via the hepatic vein. And in slide uh, 33, we see this uh, venous drainage pattern. Blood from the stomach, only a bit of the small bowel is shown there, uh, and the large bowel drain into the hepatic portal vein, then to the liver, and then from the liver via the hepatic vein back into the uh, uh, general circulation via the inferior vena cava. The fate of the blood from the hepatic portal vein is demonstrated in this slide. Note the black triangle which demonstrates a branch of the hepatic portal vein, the hepatic artery, and the bile duct. Bile uh, is found in the blood returning to the liver via the hepatic portal vein because bile is absorbed uh, into the bloodstream from the small bowel. The bile is extracted from the blood and placed into the bile canal, which leads to the bile duct, which takes it back to the gallbladder. These three structures, the bile duct, a branch of the hepatic portal vein, and a branch of the hepatic artery, are called together a portal triad. And this is a, a photomicrograph of a portal triad surrounded by uh, hepatocytes. Hepatocytes are the cells in the liver. This label is uh, undiagrammed and the next, uh, I'm sorry, this diagram is unlabeled and the next uh, diagram shows you uh, the labels of the hepatic uh, structures. And this concludes the histology of the digestive tract. So I would suggest that you uh, put this away, take it out again later. Um, I would recommend multiple viewing, pausing whenever necessary, and it should be necessary frequently in order to spend some uh, time with this material. Uh, in learning histology, a careful, critical, and repeated observation of slides uh, is the key uh, to success.